Welcome to a deep dive into PostgreSQL indexing. I'm joined by Ibrar Ahmed, Senior Software Architect at Percona, who will discuss how to use PG stat statement to find opportunities for adding indexes to your database, when to add an index, when not to add an index, and strategy around Postgres indexing. My name is Lindsay Hooper, and I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. Let me tell you a little about our speaker before we get started. Prior to coming to open source development, Ibrar uh, had a vast experience in software design and development with a focus on the system level embedded development. After joining Enterprise DB in 2006, he started his career in open source development, specifically in Postgres. Since then, he's contributed to the Postgres community as well as other open source communities. In the database field, he has experience in well-known databases such as MySQL, Oracle, and NoSQL. Ibra's experience is not limited to core databases, but rather with the tools related to databases such as Hive, HBase, and Spark. He's also worked on integrating these tools with Postgres. One last thing is that Ibra has given more than 15 Postgres talks in the last year alone, and has also authored multiple books on Postgres. So welcome, Ibra. Take it away. Hello, everybody. My name is Ibra Ahmed, and uh, I am working as a senior database architect at Percona. And I have uh, 16 years of PostgreSQL experience. So today we will study and discuss about the indexes, specifically PostgreSQL indexes. So we will start learning about the indexes, what are the indexes, how to use them, and we will discuss how we can create indexes in PostgreSQL and how we can use that indexes. So let's get started. And so, so before going to the indexes, we have to study what is index and what is heap. Because these are two terms we will use in the rest of this webinar. And these terms are also used in PostgreSQL. So when you can see this, uh, this is a book. So when we are thinking about a book, then we are calling it a heap or table. So if you think that this book is a table so, or heap and you are studying the book. So when somebody asks you to search some word from this book, so what will you do? you will start reading the book from first page to last page and note it down where you find a specific word or specific topic in the book. So this is called a table or a heap. And you know, at the end of each book, you can see there is an index which contains a word and the page number. At the end, there is an index, a word, and the page number of that word. So, if somebody asks you to search this word in the book, so if you are going to search in the heap, you will start reading the book from first page to last page. But if you have an index at the end of the book, you will go at the end of the index, you will search for that word, and then you know the page number of that word in the book and you go to that page and you can find that page so that's an easy thing so that's called index and in index you are storing the actual your search query and the pointer to the heap or the table and what is the heap which is a table which is the actual book so you have two parts one is a book a heap and one is the index which is end of the book. So just keep in mind, book contains the whole contents, index con contains the information you need and the pointer of that information you have, in, in which, which is pointing into the book. So just keep in mind these two things. So I, I will explain to you how you will relate that with the post as well. Okay, so first the heap the book, the table, we'll discuss. 
So keep in mind, always keep in mind when I'm talking about the book or table or heap, it's a similar kind of a thing. So you have uh, to imagine the same concept. Rows, tuples. Normally in database field, we are calling them rows, but in Postgres and in some database, we call them in a tuples. Store in a table, which is a rows are stored in a table. And in PostgreSQL specifically, maybe some other database also have that architecture, but here we are studying the PostgreSQL. When we're creating a table in a PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL create a separate file for each table. So when you are creating a table in a PostgreSQL, Postgres create a separate file for that. And what is the file? PostgreSQL stores all the data, user data into that file. So how we will see what is the file underneath the table we have just created. So let's create a table here. I have a create, uh, created a table which is called a foo which contains the two columns, ID and the name. So create table, foo, ID, the integer type, the name, the text data type, that's it. It, it will create a table for you. So after that, we will run some catalog queries on catalog table PG class. PG class is a catalog table of catalog table or some what is called that a system table which contains our table information so we are curing that table to get the actual file name of that table foo so query is select well file node that mean well file node mean the name of that file from pg class where rel name like foo so we are selecting the file name from the system table where table name is equal to foo. So it will give you the name of the file. So with the verification, you, you can verify easily. You can verify easily that the physical file on the disk can be seen in the PostgreSQL PG data directory. So just go to the PG data directory. I'm not going PG data directory. I'm just LS minus LRT. Just select uh, curing a directory where we can see the file LS minus LRT PG data directory. Actually, PG data directory is a folder where all the PostgreSQL cluster is saved. So you can see the file exists there. And you can see the size of that file is zero. If you can see the size of the file is zero by because we just created that file. We just created that table. So it doesn't have any rows in that. So file size is zero. So that means when you have created a table, PostgreSQL will create a file for you, a zero byte file for you. And when you insert something in that, you can see the data. And one more thing you have to keep in mind that tuples stored in a table does not have any order. What does that mean? When you're inserting some rows into table, don't expect that these rows will be selected in an, any order unless you specify the order by. If you have not specified order by, sometimes you will get different rows order sometimes you will get different rows order so why because these tuples are not stored in a table in ordered way i will explain that later that why it happens just for a tip here that when you are deleting a rows and inserting another rows then that space occupier is free used by the next insert so it's a random values you are getting so don't expect any order when you are inserting into the table okay 
so some more about the heap so i have explained whenever i told you the table the heap you have to imagine the book in your mind you have to imagine book in your mind so when somebody asks you to say the information from the book from the table what will you do i told you that you will read whole book to find some information from that book because you don't have any way to randomly select anything from the book so similarly you don't have any way in a table to randomly select from the table so what you will do you will select whole table and you will do a sequential scan right you will read first row second row third row fourth row fifth row and until the last row to find the some specific information for example select here i am selecting some data from table so explain select name from bar okay you can see if you see sequential scan actually make sure uh, i believe most of you know that what is explained explain just show you the explain theory the theory plan information so here i'm just uh, explaining a theory select name from bar that mean i am telling that read whole bar table the whole bar table which contains the name so name select the name from whole bar table so that 100% make sense that it will use a sequential scan because i am saying read whole book so i am saying read whole book so in in that case we am i am reading the whole book that makes sense but in a second query if you see explain name from bar where id is equal to 5432 now i am this query is asking to select the name from the bar table where id is 5432 so it's not asking to read the whole book it is not asking to selecting everything from bar table it's asking just read the name from bar table where id is equal to 5432 so this query is asking some specific information so if you see again we have a sequential scan here just forget about the parallel because in the new feature you, you will learn about the parallel scan so you have to wait for some other webinar where i will explain the parallel queries and everything but here it is a sequential scan but why So in previous query, I'm asked the query is selecting the name, all the names from the bar. It makes sense to sequential scan the whole bar table. But in second query, where ID is equal to five four three, it doesn't make sense to fully scan the table because we need a specific information. There is no need to read the whole table. So some more. graphical representation of what i'm saying with an example so maybe it will be more clear for you to understand what is the problem here i have created a table foo with an id and name column i have inserted two rows with an id alex id 1 and name alex id 2 and name bob and i am selecting ct id comma static from foo one pointer here ct id is a hidden column in postgresql which contain the exact pointer of each row location and it has two parts the first part which is here is zero is a block number and one is an offset block number and offset zero mean block number comma one mean one offset zero mean block number comma two offset that mean alex is zero comma one bob zero comma two 
and ID you have the information. How to select the data from the heap? You need to scan each and every page and look for the tuple in the in the page. So when we are reading, so in the right side you can see there is there are pages. Postgres stores data into the file. We have already discussed there is a file. And in that file, there is a 8K of pages, which is configurable at compile time. So we are not discussing that, but 8K of pages, and each page contains contains the tuples. So on the right side, you can see page number zero, page number one, page number two, and page number n. So in each page, you can see tuple one to tuple n. So it doesn't matter how many tuples can a page contains, it depends on the size of the tuples. It can be one, it can be 10 and any. So how to select the data from here? So we need to scan the pages. We have to go to each pages that the value like, like a query, if I select a query that where ID is greater than two. So we have to scan each and every page like first row, first tuple, second tuple, third tuple, that we have to read where ID is greater than two. We have to look at that where ID is greater than two or ID is greater than less, one. So we have to scan that. Like if you see the first Alex, I, I think you can see the color, maybe it's, it's very small, but you can see the zero one Alex, is tuple one, sorry, and zero two Bob is the tuple two. And what is the problem here when you are selecting all the data from the cost? Because you are paying the cost to sequentially scan the pages to look for the specific value of the pages because it is stored in an unordered way. It's not ordered way, it's unordered way the values are stored. So how you are unable to, not unable, sorry. It's it's cost, it's cost, it's most costly to select the values like that. So what's the solution? This is the solution. So when data is stored in a heap, in a book, in a table, then when you are selecting some specifically data, specific data within that table, heap, book, then it's costly to select because you have to sequentially scan that book, table, heap. But the solution is the indexes. You have to create index to avoid that extra cost of sequential scan. So let's see how we can do that. Why index? Index are entry point for the table. Index used to replace the tuple in the table. So if you remember in the first slide, I have shown you the book and I have also discussed that each book has an index at the end of the book. Where the uh, word is written and after the word there is a page number. So the word is the actual value, actual information you need and next the page number is the pointer. The page number is pointed to the book. So here the same. Index used to locate exact tuple in the page, in the table. So it's an entry point. The sole reason, I have also discussed that previously in previous slides, that the cost is the major factor while selecting from the heap. So index is used for the performance. Index and performance, are select performance mostly. The problem with the index is index Similarly, when you have created a table, it will create a file for you. And make sure that when you are creating an index, it would also create a file for that. 
Similarly, when you have created a table, it will create it created a file underneath. Similarly, when you create an index, it will also create a file on the disk. So that means more storage required. So if you inserting data into the table and you have an index on that, so you require more space there. So if you have a lot of indexes on a table, so you require a lot of space for that. Even though your table is the same. So here I have created an index. So here's a simple explaining, explains select name from bar where ID is equal to 5432. Remember the previous slide, the similar sequential scan happens. That means we are reading the whole bar table and collecting the names and checking that that name contains the ID 5432 or not and rejecting the tuples one by one, one by one, one by one. We we'll eat first tuple and check if ID is 5432. If not, drop that tuple. Next tuple, next tuple, next tuple. So when whenever you we hit ID is equal to 532, we will put that into the queue and the next tuple. So we will scan the whole bar table until there is no rows left. And after that, we project the all the rows where ID is equal to 5432. So here in this query, 38216 rows has been selected. And sequential scan, you can see clearly sequential scan happen. And you see the cost of that query. In the red, cost of the query. Now I'm creating an index on ID. Create an index by IDX, like create index in a syntax. Bar and IDX is the name of that index. On table bar, column ID. So now I'm creating an index, create index bar underscore IDX on bar ID, where bar is a table, ID is a column, bar underscore IDX is an index name. So now run the same query again. Explain, select name from bar where ID is equal to 5432. Now you can see bitmap scan has been used. If you see the bitmap scan has been used. And the bar IDX is used. Own bar underscore IDX. Forgot about what is bitmap index scan. Just see an uh, index we have created, it's used. Previously, there was no index. Now we have an index. And now you can see the cost 64313. Previously, what was the cost? 159235. Now 65313. So almost 40% improvement. Just I created a single statement, give you 40% performance. So previously, what was we doing? We were selecting each and every row and filter out every row which is ID is equal to not 542. Now we have created an index storing the IDs separately from the table and now selecting that value. The index is used and we are getting the 40% of performance. So now we back to the normal that we have proved that index is a performance gainer. When you are creating an index, you will get a performance, a minor. A minor problem is that it, it requires more space because it's, uh, it's storing some information. So what is the standard way to create an index? Just, just go to the www postgresql.org docs current sql create index.html so you where you will get the each and every syntax of creating an index here we will discuss some basic and some tips and tricks how to manipulate the index so here i have created an index idxb tree on bar id and selecting the rel5 node, maybe you remember or not, that when we have created a table, we ran the same query on the 
part table. Now we are creating an index and we have running the same query on the catalog table. Catalog table PG class where like is IDH B3 and there is a physical file exists. That's proof that when you are creating a table, it creates a physical file for you and you can select from PG class. And when you are creating an index, it will also create a file on the disk and you can select that using the same query. There's no difference in table and index when you're looking at the file created by the system. So for the proof, you can go to the PG data directory and look at that files 16425 and you can see the file exists. And I have some data on that uh, index, but you can see the size of that file. The file has some size. One minor nit is here, just for your quiz, for not for the quiz, it's not a class, sorry. So it's just for your information that it's not one file for one table or one file, one index. Actually, when you're creating a table, it is one file for one table till it hits a one GB limit. That means when you're creating a table, it will create a one file for you. And when you start inserting data and when it hits the one GB limit, it will create an, another file with dot one. Like if you have a file name one, six, four, two, five, and when this file hits 1 GB, the next data will go to 16425.1. And that means it's 1 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB, 4 GB. So it's 1 GB of files. So just a pointer for you that don't confuse that we create only one file. So create some more index creation. So I have created an index here bar index on bar id and you can see i have created a index on single column so previously i just created a index and you i have shown you that how it has been used now we are going for some complex indexes so this one the simplest one where you you, you are using a single column while creating an index so bar is a row, a table, and ID is a column. And you have created a bar underscore IDX index on table bar column ID. So you can see bar underscore IDX is used. That's it. Now, most people have some question that when they are creating an index, different kind of an index, it locks the table and you cannot insert and update the table. That's the major problem. Because if you have uh, some 100 GBs of, uh, of table, the table size is 100 GB, 200 GB, and you want to create the index on that. It may be, maybe if you have, it depends on the system that it will create, it will take one hour or two hours to create maybe four hours to create an index on that table. So that means your system will be down for that long because that table, you in on that table, you cannot insert up it because that table is blocked till it will create an index on that. So uh, it's really very some problem for the most of the people. So they don't want to lock their table. So Postgres has come with the new idea to create a index concurrently. That means when you have created an index, so your table will not be locked. So you can update and insert in that table. While in other session, there will you are creating an index on that. So here is the query. I have created a create index on bar. Forget about the using between. So it creates a create index. Time is one, two, three, zero, three millisecond. Uh, 12 uh, seconds. And 
The second query, I have created a create index concurrently IDX on bar, sorry, on bar using the tree, forget about that, create index. The one problem is here, not problem, that it will not, concurrently will not lock your table, but it will take more time to create a index. So that's me. If you want, don't want to lock your table, please use concurrently, but make sure that it will, it will take more time to create index. If you don't use concurrently, it will lock your table, but it will do quickly to create the index. So it's up to you. You have both the options. In this case, the time is almost double, more than double. So previously I have discussed that, uh, how to create an index on a column, single column, and concurrently, separately, you can also create with two columns, three columns. So let's go to some complex type of indexes, like expression indexes. So in some, some queries, you have analyzed, you, you check with the PG stat statements and you, in your own code that you are running some queries where you are not, your content is using the same expression. Like here, you are always using select static from bar where lower name is equal to something, some text. Forget about it, what, what is the text. So that means whenever you are selecting, your where class always contain a lower name, lower name. So why you have to create a index on name? Because whenever you create an index on name, on name it has to apply the lower each and every time. The best solution is you create an index on bar like create index idx underscore exp on bar lower name that means the whole expression. So it will once evaluate the lower expression on the name and sort that information into the index. So what it happens, it will reduce the cost. So, always think about the when you are using the expression in your where class and somewhere where you are selecting data, make sure you are using the same kind of expression, use that expression in your index, you will get the more benefit of that. It's, it's not for the lower, upper type of expression. Let's discuss about some more complex type of uh, expression like explain select static from bar where dt is a daytime plus interval two days less than now it's just expression you are using that whenever you are selecting that you have a where class where you are you have a daytime column and you are adding two days interval on that and you are continuously doing that so why you are creating a index on only DT, just create a expression index on a bar, a table name, and the whole expression index. So this is a bit complex expression. So any valid expression can be used in an index. Valid Postgres in expression can be used here. Postgres does not to always evaluate that expression, filtering out the information. It will evaluate that expression once and store that into the index. So it's fast. So another kind of problem, sometimes it happens, let's, let's go to the back to the point one where we have discussed that uh, index is used for the performance but it has one drawback that it required some space. 
it requires some space. Sometimes it doesn't matter because uh, the space is less cheaper than the performance. But, but it hits when you have a multi GB of multi terabytes of uh, tables and you have creating an index on that and your index is on multiple GBs and so sometimes it, it hurts. So you, for example, you have a big table, very big table. And after running PG stat statement, you evaluate that most of your queries or your 100% of your queries hitting the first 1000 of your IDs. Like I have a table here, IDX full on bar, sorry, a bar table, which contains an ID and names. So most of the query you are thinking that which is hitting less than 1000. Your ID is less than 1000. And you require a performance here. So you want to create an index on that. Let's create an index on that. That's the solution I have discussed before. That whenever you need a performance, you have to create an index. So what is the solution? Create index. Just read the left side of that. Create index IDX full own bar ID. Run the query. It will give you the bitmax index and Performance is really good, but let's get the size of this index, which is 214 MB, 214 MB. And in PG stat statement, you have analyzed that you are not curing anything which is greater than 1000. You are always curing less than 1000. So Postgres have a solution for that. Create an index like a partial index. Create index IDX part own bar ID where ID is less than. So you can add a where class where ID is less than 1000. Now run the same query. The performance is same. No problem at all. You will get the same performance. But when you are checking the size of this index, you can see it's just 240 KB. No performance difference, but size is 240 KB. So now here you are getting the same performance with almost many times less uh, this space. So one, this is the size problem. This is the question. What happened when we query where ID is greater than 10,000? This, this index would not be used. So this index is just for less than 1000, not for the greater than 1000. So that's it. It will not use, heap will be used or some other index will be used. This index will not be used when ID is greater than 1000. No problem. You have seen your 99.9% .9 queries or your 99% queries are using less than 1000. So just for one query, you are wasting a lot of space. Just let them run, uh, uh, let, let that query run for a longer time. No problem at all. But it's your choice. The solution answer is. So I think we have discussed some indexes, expression indexes, and some kind of an indexes. So the first index type is B tree. Some, it's called a B minus tree. What is the B minus tree indexes? Just go to the Wikipedia and you can see what is B3 indexes. So it's, it's actually a data structure. I think most of the people know that what is the B3 and how it works and everything. I will discuss it here with respect to PostgreSQL with some bit of internal details, but for the actual detail, you can go to the Wikipedia and you can learn how B3 internally works. So which actually whenever we talk about the indexes, we have to learn which kind of operator it supports. So B3 supports less than operator, less than equal to, equal to, greater than, equal to, and greater than. So almost all the operator it supports. Not all, almost. So 
the syntax says create index idx b tree on foo. That's enough for the b tree because the default is b tree. So you create index b idx b tree on foo. That's enough. It will create a b tree index. But using b tree name is optional and it's for other type of indexes but by default b3 index so if you skip that using then it's the same thing but not for the others so now we are explaining static from foo where name is equal to text array and text sorry text uh, and percentage and uh, starting from text so index scan you can see index scan idx b3 is used so it's simple i have created an index using a b3 and just during a table foo where name is some text and it's using the idx b3 it's a simple we have already discussed that it's just when we when previously we created an index it's the same thing now we explicitly saying that it's b3 previously it was b3 also so here the same example if you go back to the so so when with the same information create table foo integer name text inserted into foo one in lx bob i have inserted almost the same information and you see i have created a many columns like in lx has one dot 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 bob have like it's have hundreds of columns so you have a table here which contains uh, the information like CTID, static from foo, where CTID, ID, name, and other columns and has information. So when I created our index, so you see Alex, you can see where is the Alex, the double two is the Bob, you can see the Bob on the right side. Similarly, so this is the heap and B3 index. The B3 index store the information like here I have created a index on the table foo on the column name. So here the index key is the name and the CTID is also stored. So in the B3 we are storing the indexed column which is right here is the name we are storing alex and bob and the position of that index into the heap zero one so you remember that when we have created a table just above there here it contains the ctid and all the columns of that table so, like mean all the column and the information but in index only the index column and the pointer and this information is stored like a balance tree which is very easy to traverse we don't need to traverse sequentially we are traveling using a balance tree with some hits which would reach to the desired value but in the upper where the values are unendered sequentially stored, it's really hard to detect that. But this value, like it's similar. Like you have an information that this value is uh, stored some books and you have some one page, second page, third page, fourth page, fifth page, you are just scrolling across the pages. But like if I said that you have some information that's open the book from the center, and you will know that the value is on the like a quick sort quick sort and the value is in the second half of the book so you open that and you immediately go to the value so similarly here the alex box and the ctid this information is stored in the b balance tree so it will search the value very easily so the second index the hash index hash index only used for the equality operators the hash index the b3 index were used for the almost all the operators 
but the hash index are only supported for the equality operators. So here, create index, id hash on bar using hash and the name. So here you can see that the difference is using hash, not B tree. So it's easy. Whenever you have an equality operator, use a hash. For the other operator, use the B tree. The third index is Brin. Brin is a block range index. Sometimes you have a, that information that which is a your information are lying with the physical storage of the table. Like you have information sorted like that, inserted like that, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So it never happened that you inserted the information about the January and then February and then again January. If you have continuous information, that it never ever go back then you have a one more option to create an index. Like a page number. You know, your book have a one, two, three, four page. And it never happened that next page will be the fourth page. No, it's seventh page, eighth page, ninth page. Never happened to be a seven again. So it's a physically aligned with the physical, it's, it's aligned with the physical story. Like a minimum value of the column. So. Sorry, means no, not minimum value. The page number I discussed, like uh, date, like uh, sequential number, like uh, serial number, like that, which is which is, which kind of in a sequence. It never happened to the go back. So in that case, you need to store the three values only in the table. In the B tree, what we have stored the index column and the position of that column. What have we stored in the hash? The hash value of the column but in the brin we will store the page number minimum value and the maximum value so what's the benefit of that the benefit is the former and the storage so here i will give you the example of that here the sequential scan you can see we have a sequential scan here and speed is 7397 and we have a brin index which gives you a 4.233 millisecond. It's not half, it's not, it's, it's, it's many times less than that. Why? Because the date time is, a, we have stored a sequential date times, value as a sequential, like nine months, 10 months, 11 months of some dates, and it creates a print. So it knows which page contains the actual information. So it directly hit that page. It knows the page number, it knows the starting position of the page, it knows the starting ending date of that page. So the value is very precise. So you can directly go there and get the information from there. But if you are deleting information and inserting new rows in that, no, forget about that print index. You are destroying that. It will not be used. So what other benefit of that? You can see create index. I have created a B3 index, hash index, and brin index on date. It's very clear. <laughs> the size you can see is just B3 is uh, 21 MB and 48 MB because it's the 48 the KB. And uh, brin is just 48 KB. The size is very low. It is storing very less information. So the next one, generalized inverted index. It's a specialized kind of, kind of an index in a PostgreSQL. It is used when we have to index some composite values, multiple values, composite values. Because if we create a normal index and it will scan the document each and every time, it's not good. So we have to scan the document upfront to create an index on the composite value of that document then the gen index will be used. Like here, in an example, maybe uh, maybe I'm not very clear what I'm saying, so the example will give you the actual value. So here I, I created a uh, table bar. ID is integer, name, a JSON B type, uh, DT a date. So here I'm selecting a name DT from bar where limit is equal to five. So you, you can see the name is a document, a JSON B document where name, Alex, phone, and everything is there. So what index can I use here? The index on name or data 
no i want to index the actual value in the json b document not the whole json like if i want to index the whole json b document which is which is name doesn't make sense for me i want to index the value inside the composite values inside the json b document so here i'm creating that so what i have done i have created a chain index chain index name using chain index name and when i wrote the query explain analyze select static from bar where name within the that the name is equal to alex the query plan you have seen the sequential scan on bar and 0 0.107 millisecond is the planning time and 1079 is the millisecond is the execution time but on the right side you can see the index is used and the execution time is less and you have specifically seen that normally whenever we use a b tree or hash b tree index that name we are using name is equal to or name is equal to alex and something like that but here we are curing inside the json b document where name is equal to alex sorry about that this is also name and the column is also name just confusing on the next slide i will change that that this column name is also name and within the document name is also name it should not be the name some other name is better for that but we are curing inside the json b document which is json b is a composite value and we created a compose uh, index on the composite values and we are selecting some values which is inside the json b document but we are getting the benefit of the indexes because of the this gen index gist gist is a generalized search tree it is tree structured access method and where it's used it's used normally where uh, complex it's, it's actually a framework you have to do to some complex data type like used to find the point within the box used for the full text search in today so you can use for these kind of things so we will i will discuss that that where this is used where gen is used so i will discuss in that slide where in what b3 use this index for most of the queries and different data types most of the queries is the normally try to use the b3 use for the equality operators only you cannot use other than the equality operators and your value is very low i don't recommend to very small like your string is very small don't try to use the hash use the b3 index it will perform better the bring index there is no way to use bring index if your value is not sequentially lined up with the data set like your data is not physically aligned with the physical story so forget about the bring so like sequential lineup data set like the dates sequential dates serial numbers page numbers you can use it for gen use for the documents and arrays and the gist use for the text search so one more index which is called the index only scan index is stored separately i have discussed that index is also stored in separately like the book we have discussed it the book index are stored at the end of the book book which contains 10 20 40 pages sometimes you know i give you the query that count the number of well number where postgres is written in the book you go to the index and you will check that uh, index uh, where may, uh, word postgres is on page 10 page 11 page 13 page 14 page 16 and it's a 510 so you will give the query 5 without reading the book just go to the index and you can count that how many times in the book is postgresql and from the index and you will set 5 times so this is called index in this case that's mean if your query 100 percent fit within the index it will not query the heap it will directly give you the data from the index 
it is called index only scan here is the example so here idx b tree index only scan on bar id and name you have a index on id and name and the first query id name dt pass another column from bar where id is greater than 10000 and less than oh, forget about this query what is the query i'm not concerned about the query it's use index scan why because you are asking postgres that give me two column from index and one column from heap so it will give you all three columns from heap it will give the it will get the pointer from the index scan of these rows and give you all the information id name dt from the heap but in this next query explains direct from id name from bar where id you can see id name id id all columns are within the index so it will use the index only scan it will read id name from index and give it to you it will not go to the uh, heap and extract the information because it already had that information in the previous query it doesn't have any dt so it will not give you the value from the index so this time it, it directly gives you the value from the index so that's that's index on the scan so whenever you plan try to see that your queries are hitting the you can create an index only scan because it's faster than the index scan so try to use index only scan but it's matter of your own so some queries i think we are running out of time here but uh, i wrote some basic queries for you that how to detect uh, duplicate indexes like you have created a uh, index on a table and on a some column same index in on the same column why you have two column because you are wasting your space so here are some of the query you can see that the, when you run this query you will get the counts directly the whole query you run that it will say that this relation is this index key is b3 column your second column of bar table has two b3 more than one b3 indexes just remove one so it's just uh, query just you can run your database it will give you all the information on the database drop multiple indexes so this is this is the query simple query where you can see which kind of index can be used which kind of uh, operands like uh, operator like uh, you run this query about the gen that gen and uh, which array operation ts vector of of ops json ops because it will give you the all the information so just change the gen just i have just run this query gen just because if you run this the b3 is whole long list of that so operator family is so if you run that you can get the information about the b3 hash brin all that so there is a some other uh, ways to detect your index stats like pg stat user index and pg stat statement so here are some queries unused index sometimes you run your query you have to run your uh, queries on the database sometimes like quarterly or monthly you run some queries and you have seen that you have not used some index any time last three months or four months here i give you the never used idx food date never used because it will never scan the second idx b3 never used idx b3 id never used idx b3 name six times used okay four so if you are you have seen that the previous collected stats so from this collected stats you have not used this index so why this is here because it 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 increase the planning time and each every everything so you have to not in a planning time you have to think about that so why these are here so i'm just thinking that uh, so i'm done i think uh, it's time for uh, some question because I'll, we already spent one hour but uh, i can answer some questions and if you have some more question you can uh, send me the email 
So I will answer the questions in detail, but I can entertain some of the questions. Fantastic. So it's up to you. Yep, um, feel free to stay on for the questions, um, but we understand if you need to hop off. So we have about five questions in the hopper. Um, the first is, what's the meaning of the first figure of a cost? When it says 939.93, whence does this come? Um, and I believe this is from the Y index slide. Uh, this one? 159235? 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, Bigger values mean more time, less value is less time. So it's not millisecond, it's not second, it's just an arbitrary value used by Postgres to explain where the higher values is more time and less value is less time. That's it, it's, it's just a simple answer. Fantastic. Um, next question. Um, why would you use a gin index instead of a bitmap index on name? Okay, I will go directly to this slide. Why I have not used? Okay, so I I told that when you directly created a B tree index on name, then you cannot extract the value like name column. I'm extracting that value. I just told that there, I was just confused that there is a name and the name, two names actually I have confused somewhere. That uh, column name is name. I created a gen index on column name, name, which is a JSON B composite value document. And here I'm securing that this document contain information which name is equal to Alex. I'm extracting that information from that JSON document. Normally when we are using the B tree, we are directing matching our information with the column. Our information like in the uh, which we are want to extract from the table comparing with the column. But here we are comparing column with the value extracted from the JSON B document. But that was not directly comparing our name with the whole JSON B document. Here you see in this column, we are name, we are not comparing name with the whole name, LS, phone, 2333, 222211. We are not comparing that. We are, we are getting the value from the, within the JSON B document. That's why we are using the gen not tree. It's just for your exercise. Just try to create this table, insert some values, try to use B tree, try to use gen. So you will see the performance very good. That's it. Thank you. Um, and I'm getting notes that um, you've answered some of the questions already in speaking. So the last question I have here is, I've seen UUIDs being used for primary keys in some tables. Which index type would you recommend for that? Normally, I think the UUID is, uh, index is, a uh, bitter index is better for that, I think. Because it's a normal, uh, some, I heard that some, but sometime, but I'm not 100% sure which kind of a UUID is used. It is uh, uh, sequentially append, uh, appending, but I'm not sure because sometimes it's used, sometimes another things are to generate that. But I think B3 is better for that. Okay, fantastic. Um, so with that, Ibra, I wanna thank you for taking the time to speak with us this morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are. 
Um, I want to thank everyone for hopping on and spending a little bit of their day with us. Um, and I hope to see you all on the next Postgres conference webinar um, towards the end of the month. So cheers and have a great day. Yep. Thank you, everybody.